Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory, and in this video, we are going to take a look. We're gonna make a circuit analysis of this very interesting input amplifier from an HP equipment. The circuit is from this HP distortion analyzer, and HP used very clever tricks to make the overall system work. We are going to analyze this input amplifier here that HP is calling impedance converter. We are going to understand why this name. What is very interesting here, guys, is that the design of this impedance converter is very critical because this is the first active block that the circuit gonna excite and we need to prevent as this is a distortion analyzer we need to prevent this input amplifier here to distort the signal so this block here needs to have very high input impedance and very linear input impedance to not distort the signal as the input signal can have a very high output impedance and the linearity of this block is very important because this is a distortion analyzer and the idea is to measure the distortion of the input signal, not the distortion from the analyzer itself. And this is why HP called this the impedance converter, because no matter the impedance here on the input, no matter the impedance of the signal here on the input, this block here needs to have precise gain of unity, it's a buffer, it's a follower, and it needs to convert this high impedance signal to a low impedance signal here on the output to source all the other parts of the equipment to make the measurement. This is a very interesting design. In the next video, we are going to take a look on how the phase detectors are used to tune the Wayne bridge automatically, centering the notch filter exactly over the fundamental. The circuit that HP designed for the phase detector is very, very smart, and you're gonna see on the next video. And guys, remember, you can support the channel, supporting all the videos and the content, becoming a Patreon, link on the description. So guys, here you have the impedance converter, this buffer amplifier, unity gain amplifier that converts a very high input impedance signal here on the input. Here is the input of the equipment to a very low output impedance here to be used by the following blocks of the equipment. We expect to see here positive feedback and we see we have positive feedback here on this connection and also in this connection. This connection also works as a positive feedback and we also expect to see negative feedback to linearize the circuit. So positive feedback is used to increase the open loop gain of the circuit and also to increase the input impedance, removing the effects of parasitic capacitance. We're gonna see this here on the diodes. And the negative impedance, this trace here, of course, is used to have a unity follower with very low distortion. So guys, we see that the circuit is biased by the negative supply, negative 25 volts here and here you have GND ground so we are using a negative supply I don't know exactly why they choose to use the negative supply I need to think a little more about this I think is for common mode um, properties of this transistor here the input transistor so having it here with zero I think we can have a um, more common mode range but I need to think a little more about this here on the input you have a low pass filter resistor and capacitor to filter a little the input and to have a series resistance here that helps to protect the input of the equipment limiting the current for the clamping diodes that are here and the signal directly excites the input transistor a JFET transistor here a P JFET P channel JFET transistor here. That is the first amplifier on the chain. We have one, two, three amplifiers and this emitter follower here on the output, generating a very strong signal here that is used as the output and also as the bootstrap, positive feedback bootstrap for the other parts here. So the first thing I always do to understand a circuit is to imagine that we have a small wiggle of signal, a small step of signal in the upper direction so we can imagine that if the signal here goes up we have a small step up here we can propagate this step here through all the circuit to see how the circuit behaves to understand where we have positive and where we have negative feedback so let's let's start here guys if the signal here goes up we know that the drain here of the jfet goes down because for a signal here on the gate the drain, the, the transistor here in the drain will be working as a common source. So a common source amplifier. So the relation between gate and drain is inverse. Signal up, signal here down. This transistor here seems to be working as a common base, but it is not exactly working as a common base as you're gonna see. But the relation between emitter and collector is proportional. So if the signal here on the emitter goes down, this signal here on the collector also goes down 
down. Now the signal excites the Q3 transistor and here we have an amplifier, common emitter amplifier. So signal goes down here on the base and signal goes up here on the collector of the transistor. Now the signal going up here excites the emitter follower. The emitter follower has a direct conversion of this step. So here it goes up and this generates a upward signal here and an upward signal here on the source of the input transistor. Very, very interesting guys. Let's first take a look on the up per positive feedback section, we are seeing that the relation from this base to this emitter here, if we think on the transistor working from the base to the emitter, it works as a voltage follower. So here, this emitter here, if the signal goes down, the emitter here goes down. This, down, this downward signal here on the emitter will be coupled to the collector resistance of this amplifier here. And this is very interesting, guys. We are bootstrapping the collector resistance. So if the signal here goes down, it goes down, goes down, and here it also goes down. So what happens here, guys? We are increasing the impedance, the virtual impedance of this resistance because the voltage over this resistor here will be always constant. The AC voltage here is constant, so the current here will be fixed. This is exactly the same as having a very high resistance here. So this positive feedback action bootstraps this resistor here, making it act as a current source. So this resistor here is acting as a current source here on the collector of this amplifier. This increases the open loop gain of the amplifier. And, and it's very important to have a very high open loop gain. So we have the maximum correction when we apply the negative feedback here to make a unitary buffer, a unity buffer. It's important to have very high open loop gain so the feedback works properly, reducing and canceling all the non-linearities of the amplifier. So this upper positive feedback here is used to bootstrap the collector resistance of this transistor, making it work as a current source, increasing a lot the open loop gain of this section here. Very, very interesting. We also see, guys, that this output signal here is also applied as a positive feedback to the base of this middle amplifier, Q2. And this also bootstraps the gain of the amplifier, because look at this. If the signal goes up here, the signal also goes up here. And we see that when the signal goes down, in the emitter, the base goes up. We are increasing the differential voltage here. We are amplifying the VBE effect. VBE here, okay? Base emitter voltage here. We have this base emitter voltage here is being bootstrapped because when the emitter tries to go down, the base goes up, increasing VBE, generating an even higher voltage, an even, even higher excitation on the collector of the transistor. This goes down even more. This is positive feedback, also increasing the open loop gain of the circuit. Very, very, very beautiful design, guys. We see here a compensation capacitor used to stabilize a little the circuit because for very, very high frequencies, this positive feedback will be shunted to ground here, shunted to ground, and this transistor here acts as a, truly acts as a common base without amplification of current, only with amplification of voltage. For very high frequencies, we reduce the gain the open loop gain has a roll off generated by this capacitor here. Not only this capacitor, we have compensation also here, compensation here. We have compensation in a, lo in a lot of places and this is one of the compensation capacitors. Now let's go to the input side of things. Here we also have very interesting design, guys. We can see, guys, this line is the output signal, okay? So this line goes here and it bootstraps, look at this, very, very, very interesting, guys. It bootstraps the two protection diodes. Look at this, bootstrapping the two protection diodes, we are canceling, we are nulling the parasitic capacitance because when the input signal here goes up, this node also goes up, this node also goes up, and we have no AC differential voltage across the bootstrapped protection diodes. So the parasitic capacitance here of the, of the diodes, we have here the parasitics of the diodes, will be nude because the two leads of the capacitors have the same step 
on voltage. The same small signal voltage appears on the two sides of the capacitors and this capacitance and this capacitance is nulled by the positive feedback action. Very, very interesting. Positive feedback is also used. <laughs> Take a look at this, guys. To bootstrap the gate and the input resistance of the biasing network here of the, J, the input JFET. We can see that when the signal goes up here, signal in the source tries to go up. We are going to understand in a moment the negative feedback that's also applied here to the source. But let's think, let's think about the gate to source condition, condition here. When the gate goes up, the source tries to go up. It works here as a common drain amplifier from gate to source. This upwards signal here makes the same thing with this resistor here. This biasing resistor here is also bootstrapped. If the signal goes up here, the signal goes up here and we have no differential voltage over this biasing resistor here. So no current in the ideal condition, no current will be flowing in this resistor here. For the AC condition, we have this resistor out of the equation. The input signal here will not see this resistor because it is bootstrapped by the positive action of the source, generating no differential voltage over the resistor. This also improves the input impedance. So we are imp improving the input impedance using bootstrapping the diodes and also bootstrapping the gate and source relation here of the JFET. And now guys, we need to have unity gain and we need to have negative feedback to have a very linear amplifier. And this is the final step here. We have negative feedback from the output here going through the source. Whoa, take a look at this, guys. Very, very interesting design, very beautiful design. Remember, this transistor here is amplifier the difference in voltage between the gate and the source. So what generates the ID current here, the signal current here, Let's say this one here, ID, the small signal current here in the drain of the JFET is generated by the difference between the gate and source voltage, VGS. Actually, a small V, I don't know how to draw it correctly. Okay, let's make an uppercase V. Okay, this voltage here is what excites the current on the drain of the JFET. So if, take a look at this, this is very interesting. If we take the output signal and applies here directly, take a look guys, I will clean this stuff here. If the signal here goes up, we see that here in the source, the signal also goes up. And you can be asking me, whoa, this is not positive feedback. No, of course no, because now the relation of the input signal to the output signal is VGS, is the subtraction between VG, V gate and V source. So what excites this? current here, ID, ID is proportional to VG minus VS. And this subtraction here, the differential voltage over the gate to source is what generates the negative feedback. Because signal here on the gate tries to go up and we are injecting an upward signal here on the source. So this signal here applied on the source is reducing the differential voltage over gate and source. And this is negative feedback. And here we have unity negative feedback. We see that all the available voltage on the output, all the AC voltage on the output will appear on the source. We are applying 100% of the output voltage as a feedback signal. So this creates a unity buffer amplifier. This amplifier here, if we have one volt here, we will be having one volt here, okay? The gain is unity because we have the full output voltage applied as negative feedback here. Using the gate and source relation, the subtraction between V gate and V source as the negative part of the feedback. Very, very, very interesting, guys. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you like this kind of video here. I really, really love to study these HP schematics here. I always learn a lot. And it's also very nice to record for you. Very nice to make this kind of videos. So leave a comment if you like it. And I see you in the next video of All Electronics.